Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I have another wonderful one-page wonder for you. This one I think is quite versatile and could be made really for any season. I used some really pretty winter papers by Cartabella, and let's see, it's called Winter Market. So if you're interested, I will try to find it and link it for you in the description. Um, so anyway, it's just a folder or, you know, a folio, whatever you want to call it, that opens up and there's this wonderful side load pocket here for pictures, journaling cards, tags, whatever. And then it's a stacked three pocket. And I'm going to show you how to fold this out of a strip of paper. Um, and when I saw this paper pack, look at all this. There's a one full sheet, 12 by 12 over all these teeny tiny tags. And they fit in here so cute so i think this is going to be like a great gift even like a hostess gift if you're going to somebody's home before the holidays it would be a great birthday gift um you could do birthday themed you know or to just have for someone that you know needs these types of things but these pockets also will fit a gift card a gift card will fit in there i should have gotten a real gift card but this is gift card size will fit in there so you could use it for a gift card at the holidays or multiple gift cards you can put other ephemera again whatever you want to in here I just loved all these teeny tiny tags so these can be used on gifts or in a larger holiday or winter themed journal but again I think making one like for Mother's Day or birthday themed or Valentine's Day or whatever wouldn't that be cute Okay, so use whatever paper you have, but this is what I'm using. And I'm gonna show you how to cut up your papers. So you're gonna start with one 12 by 12 piece of paper. The first cut that you're gonna do is you are going to cut a piece that is five and a quarter inches wide. And then you are gonna cut off two inches because you want it to be five and a quarter by 10. Okay, all of the measurements and the scoring will be in the description of the video. So you have a five and a quarter by 10 inch piece of paper, and this one you're just gonna fold in half. So you could score it at five inches if you wanted to, but I just went ahead and folded mine in half. Okay, the strip that's left is two inches by five and a quarter. Cut it so it is five inches by two. So cut that quarter inch off, and then cut it in half. And you're gonna have two one by five inch strips. And you're gonna need those to help you with making your pocket here in a little bit. With the remaining piece of your 12 by 12 paper, you want to cut one that is four, cut it four and a half inches off. And then you're still gonna have another strip. And in fact, I haven't brought that over. It's over, it's over on my um, cutting board. Um, so this four and a half inch, and you want it to be four and a half by 11. So cut off one inch. And then there is one more strip of paper. Let me grab it. And it looks like this. And you need to cut this one, and I haven't even cut mine. This one needs to be cut. It's now two inches. There were two inches, two and a quarter inches left. And you want to cut it to five and a quarter okay so I haven't obviously cut mine yet but you want it to be the same height as your main folder and instead of running back over I'm just going to cut mine by hand I'm going to use this to make sure I get it nice and straight this is going to be the belly band okay so that's all the pieces you need two and a quarter by five and a quarter, two one by fives. We've already folded that one in half. And then this one is the four and a half by 11. This is the one that we're gonna do quite a bit of scoring on. So let me get my scoreboard out and show you. Now the paper I'm using is quite thick. And I think this project would be okay with a, um, with a card stack that wasn't quite this thick, that, that would work. But um, because mine's thick, I'm gonna score it on both sides so hopefully it won't crack. It worked really well on my prototype. 
So we are gonna score this at one and a half inches, two and a half inches, and again, this will be in the description for you. Four and a half inches, five and a half inches, and then, just don't wanna mess up, <laughs> seven and a half inches and eight and a half inches. All right, and I'm just gonna flip this over and again, score one and a half, two and a half. I don't always do this, four and a half, five and a half, but I do find it helps this thicker paper not to crack. Seven and a half, eight and a half. All right. Now, these little pieces, I've already done one of them. This is the one by five. You can just fold it in half like this. I was playing with it earlier. Fold it in half like this. Or if you want to, and mine's pretty thick, you can score it at the half inch just to help you fold it in half. And I'm gonna do that. But whoops, and of course I did not score straight. That doesn't help me, does it? All right, because it's kind of a narrow piece, but scoring it helps it just fold right in half and you get a nice crisp crease. Okay. Now, this one really does come together quite easy. And I think I want the coffee mugs on the outside and then we'll have the snowflakes on the inside. Now, let's take this piece, the piece that's 11 inches long. And on all of these where we've scored it, you just want to crease these score lines again as neatly as you can and then I'm going to show you how we're going to fold it to make our three stacked pocket but I like to first just to go through and make sure that all of my scores are creased nice and neat. Okay, did I get all of them? I think I did. So again, depending on which side of the paper you want the, um, you, you want to the front will kind of depend on which way you do it. But it is going to be folded at each one. Um, like if I fold this one this way, the next one will fold back. So it's kind of, you, go back and forth and it comes together. I don't know how to say that a little bit better. And I like having the this wider portion here at the top. So if I wanted the blue paper on the front, my pockets would be going in the wrong direction and I'd have to have that here. Or I can start folding it the other way. And I think you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. I know that sounds confusing. All right, so now if I wanted to have, like do my folder, my folder this way, I could have the blue pockets on the top. But I want the coffee cups on the top. So you may just have to play with it until you get it the way you want it. It will not hurt anything to keep going back and forth and making sure everything is creased nice and neat. Okay? So it's sort of just an accordion fold. See how it goes like a zigzag? If that helps any. All right, I did not ink any on my prototype. <laughs> and it's killing me, as you guys know, because I love to ink. And I do have a really pretty blue Distress Ink, but I'm going to skip it. I kind of like the crisp, clean look to this. But I normally would be inking all over this project. All right. Before we start, and I'm going to show you how to... These are going to wrap... Make sure you get the direction right. Around the edges to just give it... A little bit of a finished look and again I want the coffee cups going the right direction so I keep flipping them around and they're just gonna sit in here if you wanted to you could turn it this way let's see what that looks like if we wanted to boom it's all gonna come together 
you could put the blue and have the blue like that. So it really just kind of depends on your personal preference. I did the plaid against the snowflakes on this one and kept it with the pattern that the base is. This one I was thinking of doing this way. I don't know, I like both. I don't know. Get a little bit more of the coffee cup look and here you get more of the snowflakes. Let's do the snowflakes, I think I like that better. You'll pick, depending on what your paper, the pattern of your paper and how it looks. I do think this project, if you don't have paper that is printed on both sides, you could do it with a single-sided scrapbook paper. And then this part, so you'd have your pattern on the outside, your pattern on your pockets, pattern on your little sleeves that are gonna help hold it together. This would be white. You know, and you'd have your pattern here. So, uh, you know, I, I really think it would look good. It would look okay. You could always matte and put other other papers and colors on there if you wanted to. But um, I do think this project would lend itself to a single-sided piece of cardstock. Just a thought. All right. I am going to start gluing the pockets. I'm going to add glue to the little sections that um, make each of the pockets. Now, if you feel super confident, you could just glue these on and that could hold everything together. But I like giving myself a little bit of help by adding glue, I don't know if you guys can see that, just to this section. And I've gotta let it, let it grab hold. So we still have, let me get a card here. We still have this open as a pocket and it's just closed on the sides. All right, so then the next little pocket is this section. And when you're holding yours, you're gonna be able to see this, I think, quite easily. You wanna just do a thin bead of glue on each one. And I've made pockets like this before where you just kind of do the accordion fold. I think it does help. Um, to measure and score so that it looks nice and neat. But I've done some freehand, like out of book pages and things like that. And it's a fun way to build pockets out of a strip of paper. Okay, now we are gonna put these little guys on. And again, kind of look at it to see which side of the paper you want to the front. And I'm going to line it up. And add, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna add all the glue on both both sides, both of the insides. Whoa, that would be helpful if I wouldn't drop it, right? And you want enough to make it stick. And then line this guy up right up to the score line. And I'm using um, my wet white glue, this PVA glue, and it gives, it gives you a moment. You know, you really can, if you need to, adjust it just a touch. That looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah, I like having the blue contrast there. All right, let's find the other one. And again, I just kind of make sure everything was cut correctly and is going to fit. And get it glued on. And honestly, you could skip these little strips if you wanted to, and you could just glue this down to to your uh, folder. But I, I like this little touch. I like this little touch. I saw, I believe it was Amber on Ly Lyric Lover Crafts. She's one of my favorites. She makes such cute things. Um, put a border on a pocket like this on one of her projects. And um, I definitely wanted to try it and use it. I like it. Look at that. It feels very substantial too. I mean, it's almost like it, it could stand alone. It could tuck inside a large pocket and you could have these. Now, if you wanted to, turn that the right way, you could add glue to three sides and have a, a big pocket back here. 
I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep mine with just these three pockets and I'm gonna glue this entire panel to this panel because I'm not inking and it's hard to see the, the center crease line. I'm gonna fold it over this way just so you can see where I am gonna place it on the folder. So I'm gonna add a generous amount of glue. It's not going to go anywhere, but a generous amount of glue because, you know, this may get tugged on just a little bit since this is where the pockets are. Make sure I have it turned. My pockets are open the correct way. And then I'm going to just center this in this section. And like I said, it's a lot of layers. It's kind of thick. It feels very substantial. It feels good. I want to make sure I get it all pressed down. So I'm just going to burnish it really good. Nice and neat. Yay! All right, before I start pulling on it, I'm going to let that glue have a minute to hold. Let's go ahead and install this pocket. And I did this with the prototype. I brought it just a little from the edge so you could see the pattern there. I thought that looked cute. And I'm going to do the same thing here. In fact, I'm going to leave it even a little bit wider. I want this side to stay open. So I'm going to hold it. So don't put glue on the wrong part. And put glue just on the other three sides. To turn it into a sweet little pocket. And I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch. Just so that I can see that pretty pattern. Get it in here. So easy, right? All right, so all of that was made with one piece of 12 by 12 paper. You still have this piece left. You could use it for part of the draft duration on the front if you wanted to. You could cut a strip of that. I'm going to use, there's a sheet in this kit where you I've cut apart. So I think these are four by four squares. Yes, and there's another sheet that has different shape and size tags as well, but I just think these look really cute. Oh, we're gonna have to use this one. Is there enough contrast there? What do you guys think? This is where maybe adding a strip of this under there might help. I just like the, the coffee cups, but maybe it's too much. The coffee cups maybe would have done better on the blue side. I love it, but I'm gonna save it to use with a different paper. Aren't these just beautiful? All right, that one says, I love winter. Stay cozy. I just feel like I need one of the darker ones, perhaps. Cold hands, warm heart. Um, because they're the white background, and I just, I think I like the contrast. Okay, so we're gonna do stay cozy. Now, on my prototype, I just glued it down, and then I um, stuck this cute bow. This is made with... Um, these are the, the, this is the seam binding ribbon that crinkles up when it gets wet and I hand dye it just with different uh, stamp ink pads that I have. I get different colors um, and I thought this kind of a, it's like a gray blue, lavender blue, um, just looked really cute with this paper. If we want, we could put a, I think I, it's sitting here on my desk somewhere. We could put a length of this, we could use this and have a, a tie closure. So let's do that on this one. Now the first one, I just glued it down and stuck a ribbon on it and that works, you know, it, it's perfectly fine. But let's make this one that, that closes just to show you that. So let me find the end of my ribbon. I wanna leave enough so I can tie a cute bow on that side. I'm not gonna cut it yet. So I'm gonna leave stretch, stretched out, not crinkled up. I'm gonna leave about 12 inches. So it looks like that crinkle. That should be plenty to tie a bow. And then I'm gonna flatten this out to help stick it down. And then this, this card right here will hold it all together. Won't that look cute? Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to use some two-sided tape for this. And you could use Fabrifix glue. That would work. I'm gonna use this. I just wanna make sure it's not wider than my card because I don't want sticky stuff out here. 
this will be enough to hold my ribbon in place while I get the, the rest of it glued down. All right, I think that's about where it is. And I'm gonna just pull it out so that it stretches flat and then it'll help it not be crumpled up under the cardstock. Very cute. Okay. Um, and again, I could use the two-sided tape, but I'm just gonna use my glue to glue it down. It'll be fine. It will be fine. So if you haven't already, I hope you will leave me a comment and tell me what you think of this project. If you're gonna make one, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Believe it or not, those thumbs up and those comments and all of those things really help us creators. So I appreciate those of you that take the time to do that and to let me know that you're out there and that you're watching. It's very encouraging. So thank you. All right, I'm still not gonna cut this because it's not super long and I don't wanna waste it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tie a cute bow with this extra ribbon here so I can then decide when where to cut it at. So there we go. Yeah, and 12 inches was way more than I needed. I probably could have gotten away with about half of that, maybe seven inches. All right, so I'm gonna cut that piece off. And I don't need the super long piece here, so I'm gonna trim it, but we'll use it for some of the tags inside. Cute, right? If we wanted to, we could put some more. And I, it, I didn't even pull it that tight, so there's plenty of ribbon. Um, in case this gets a little chunky, depending on what we put in here. So I am going to definitely um, put another one of these cards. Just be oh, this is this is where I could use this one, right? Ah, so cute. Warm winter wishes. It could go either direction. It can go like this or like this. Let's put it in that direction, and I may put a ribbon on it too. And then I also have this baker's twine that I used on some of the little tags, and it's got silver. It's white and silver. So sweet, right? And I put, this one was kind of plain, and I put a sticker. Let's look at the sticker sheet that came with this and see if there's something we want to put on here. This says it's hot chocolate weather. I wonder if I can make that look cute. Maybe down? Yeah. Oh, I want it kind of centered, a little bit up from the bottom. How'd I do? All right, until I really press it in, it, I was able to kind of wiggle it a little bit. Okay, this needs rubbing. Now, these are the little tiny tags. And all I did, I'm not gonna do all of them on camera, but all I did was I punched out the hole on each of them and if you don't have this paper kit and you like this idea let me give you the measurement of the approximate size of these you could cut just little tags like some of these are even just rectangles right um, you can cut them like in little rectangle tags you could round the top cut a tag corner whatever you want and each one is they are one and one eighths by a, a smidge over one and three quarters. I would say that's close to one and seven eighths. But you could just cut little tags out of paper or things that you like and stick them in here. Now, other pieces of ephemera tags, little faux stamps. I mean, anything could go in here and be really, really cute. All right, I'm gonna use this little piece of ribbon. So some of these I just um, tied on like this. I'll show you. I wove it through. This seam binding ribbon is really, it's actually easy to work with. Um, it, it's very thin, but it has a cute, a cute look. I think this piece is long enough that I can 
make it be long enough for two tags, depending on how I use it. So let's, let's pull it over because we definitely didn't need it that long. You want enough so it looks cute, but you don't need a super duper length. Cute, right? There we go. All right, so I did some like that. Some I, ooh, I don't want to cut from the wrong piece. Some I will show you I looped through this way. And then I'll show you how the different ties I did with the Baker's Twine too. If you're ever having trouble getting it through, you can use the, not the sharp end, but the end where you actually thread the big needle and help push it through. Just a trick. You guys probably already know that, but sometimes I fight with it and I'm like, Pam, just pick up your needle. It's right here on your desk. Okay, so push it through like that where you have it doubled over and then I just pull them through this way. Very cute. And let's see, with the Baker's Twine, this is really skinny again, so I'm using a double, a double strand. And this is how I did some of them. Again, I pushed it through and then I tied it and I did a little bow and I thought those looked really cute. So let me show you that. Um, so just, uh, I didn't do a knot. I just tied it like you're tying your shoe and then pulled it through. You do have to kind of fiddle with it a little when you have these double strands going so that you pull the, the, the right the right pieces. <laughs> Here we go. I hope you guys can see it. And then once you get that, isn't that a cute little bow? Once you get the bow the way you like it, you can decide how long you want the tails to be. I love it. Love it. Love it. There we go. So that was, I did a few like that. And even though this is thin, I did a few just like I did this one with the Baker's Twine. I think I've got to punch another hole. And then some I just tied on. So I just wanted to give you a few ideas. And again, don't, don't not make this if you don't have this paper kit. I think it'll be cute with other papers and whatever you choose, cut that at an angle, and whatever you choose then to put in these pockets, all right? So I'm going to go through here and finish punching these out. And I kind of like that some are the dark papers. You could even, this is one of the rectangle ones, but if you like the side with the little hats and mittens, you could use that side. And I just tuck them in, and I did nine. Hmm, I thought I had cut out mine. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm missing one. One strip had nine tags, and so I know I cut it. It's probably buried here on my desk, or you guys are probably, you can see it, and, you're, and I just can't. But I'll find it and tuck it in there. Um, I think it looks great. I will, I'm going to add a little bow to this one. These I like to stick on with my glue dots. I just find it's less messy and quick. So, but again, if you don't mind waiting on your Fabrifix glue to dry, those kinds of things, I made a little teeny tiny bow. We'll see if it looks okay. Um, yep. I just find the glue dots help me move a little more quickly and I don't have to worry um, about them letting go or for them to dry. All right. Very cute. And again, you can use different ribbons. I kind of like the idea of having it pull through the different multiple times if I can find my words today. All right, I hope you guys like this 
project. I hope you will make one. Let's see what it looks like when I tie it up. Um, again, thank you for watching. I appreciate all your sweet comments and your support. And until we're together again, I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks for watching. See ya.